full screen game. <laughs> Easily disturbed. I think I need to. I don't hear anything. Hmm. Oh, oh, wow, okay, yeah, that, that is plen plenty high. Sorry? Mm, it sounds more like... Nope. I'm not gonna voice act. There are there is no voice acting in game either. So yeah, uh, whatever. <laughs> Second most, which one the most boring then? I I I'll read, but I'm not gonna do some voice acting work because I I can't. <laughs> you see an annoying girl running toward me from the distance, waving her arms in the air like she's totally oblivious to any attention that might draw to herself. That girl is Sayori. Ugh, Japanese names. Boo. My neighbor and good friend since we were children. You know, the kind of friend you'd never see yourself making today, but just works out because you've known each other for so long. We used to walk to school together on days like this, but starting around high school we would oversleep more and more frequently and I would get tired of waiting up. But if she's going to chase after me like this, I almost feel better off running away. <laughs> However, I just sigh and idle in front of the crosswalk and let's say you already catch up to me. <laughs> I overslept again. But I caught you this time. Maybe but only because I decided to stop and wait for you. Oh, that was me. See? This is also another another reason as to why I don't do voice acting, because I never know when they change it. Even though it says there. But Eh, you say that like you were thinking about ignoring me. That's mean, us. Ugh, oh, I should've picked a better name. Whatever. <laughs> well, if people stare at you for acting weird, then I don't want them to think we're a couple or something. <laughs> fine, fine. But you did wait for me, after all. I guess you don't have it in you to be mean when, even if you want to. Whatever you say, Sayori. <laughs> Meep? We were talking about Weep. Uh, the name is in. in you know. <laughs> cross the street together and make our way to school. As we draw near, the streets become increasingly speckled with other students making their daily commute. By the way, Usk, have you decided on... Wow. I don't know if this English is bad or if 
my English is bad. <laughs> Have you decided on a club to join yet? A club? Told you already, I'm not interested in joining any clubs. I haven't been looking either. Eh? That's not true. You told me you would join a club this year. Did I? I'm sure it's possible, possible that I did. In one of our many conversations where I did where I dismissively go along with whatever she's going on about. Sayori likes to worry a little too much about me. And I'm perfectly content just getting by on the average while spending my free time on games and anime. Uh huh. I was talking about how I'm. <clears throat> I was talking about how I'm worried that you won't learn how to socialize or have any skills before college. Your happiness is really important to me, you know. And I know you're happy now, but I. I had the thought of you becoming a neat. It's a neat. In a few years, because you're not used to the real world. You trust me, right? Don't make me keep worrying about you. All right, all right. I'll look at a few clubs if you if it makes you happy. No promises, though. Will you at least promise me you'll try a little? Yeah, I guess I'll promise you that. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> I don't think there are any dudes in this one. Oh. And that's an abbreviation I've never heard before. Why do I let myself get lectured by such a carefree girl? More than that, I'm surprised I even let myself relent to her. <laughs> I guess seeing her worry so much about me makes me want to ease her mind at least a little bit, even if she does exaggerate everything inside of her head. Did you Wikipedia again, Richard? <laughs> the school day is as ordinary as ever, and it's over before I know it. After I pack up my things, I stare blankly at the wall, looking for an ounce of motivation. Clubs. Sayori wants me to check out some clubs. I guess I have no choice but to start with the anime club. Hello! Sayori? Sayori must have come into the classroom while I was spacing out. I look around and realize that I'm the only one left in the classroom. I thought I'd catch you coming out of the classroom, but I saw you just sitting there and spacing out, so I came in. Honestly, you're even worse than me sometimes. I'm impressed. You don't need to wait up for me if it's going to make you late to your own club. Well, I thought you might need some encouragement, so I thought, you know. Know what? Well, that you could come to my club. Sayori. Yeah? There is no way I'm going to your club. Eee, meanie. <laughs> Sayori is the vice president of the literature club. Also, I'm gonna have a really hard time seeing that over and over. Not that I was ever aware that she had any interest in literature. It's one of the words like, um, you know, the one I can't say in Left 4 Dead. Defib. <laughs> in fact, I'm 99% sure she only did it because she, sh she thought it would be fun to help start up a new club. So she was the first one to show interest. After the one who proposed the club, she inherited the title Vice President. That said, my interest in lit literature is guaranteed to be even less. Yeah, I'm going to the anime club. Come on, please. Why do you care so much anyway? Well... I kinda told the club yesterday that I would bring in a new 
Let's keep me cupcakes and everything. <laughs> Excuse me? Don't make promises you can't keep. Can't tell if Sayori is really that much of an airhead or if she's so cunning that she cunning as to have planned all of this out. I let out a long sigh. <laughs> Fine, I'll stop by for a cupcake, okay? <laughs> Yay! Let's go! <laughs> right. It's a musical masterpiece, weep. And thus, today marks the day I sold my soul for a cupcake. What happened to the music? Mm -hmm. it, I dejectedly follow Sayori across the school and upstairs, a section of the school I rarely visit, being generally used for third year classes and activities. Sayori, full of energy, swings open the classroom door. <laughs> Everyone, a new member is here. I told you, don't call me a new member. Eh? I glance around the room. <laughs> Boobies. Welcome to the Literature Club. It's a pleasure meeting you. Sayori always says nice things about you. <laughs> Seriously, you brought a boy? I'm a boy? Why am I a boy? Also, why I'm not surprised. Still. Way to kill the atmosphere. Ah! Us! What a nice surprise! Welcome to the club. All words escape me in this situation. This club is full of incredibly cute girls. What are you looking at? If you want to say something, say it. S sorry. <laughs> Natsuki. <laughs> Girl with a sour attitude whose, whose name is apparently Natsuki. This one I don't recognize. Her small figure makes me think she's probably a first year. She's also the one who made the cupcakes, according to Sayori. You can just ignore her when she gets moody. Sayori says that quietly into my ear and then turns back to the other girls. Anyway, this is Natsuki, always full of energy. And this is Yuri, which is a Russian boy's name, but you know. The smartest in the club. But don't say things like that. Yuri, who appears comparably more mature and timid, seems to have a hard time keeping up with people like Sayori and Natsuki. Ah, well, it's nice to meet both of you. And it sounds like you already know Monica, is that right? That's right! It was great to see you again, Usk. Monica smiles sweetly. We do know each other. Well, we rarely talk, but we were in the same class last year. Monica was probably the most popular girl in class. Smart, beautiful, athletic, Basically, completely out of my league. So, having her smile at me so genuinely feels a little... Y y you too, Monica. Come sit down, Usk. We made a room for you at the table so you can sit next to me or Monica. I get the cupcakes! Hey, I made them. I'll get them. Sorry, I got a little too excited. Then, how about I make some tea as well? <gasps> Have tea. Mm. Ugh. Ugh. It was it was bitter tea. Maybe all the sugar is at the bottom. Blah. Blah. <laughs> the girls have a few desks arranged to form a table. As Sayori mentioned, it's been widened so that there is 
one space next to Monica and one space next to Sayori. Natsuki and Yuri walk, walk over to the corner of the room, where Natsuki grabs a wrapped tray and Yuri opens the closet. Still feeling awkward, I take a seat next to Sayori. Oh, I don't get to choose? Natsuki proudly marches back to the table, tray in hand. Okay, are you ready? Ta-da! <gasps> Natsuki lifts, lifts the foil off the tray and reveals a dozen white fluffy cupcakes decorated to keep to look like little cute cats. The whiskers are drawn with icing and little pieces of chocolates were used to make the ears. Yeah, you were so good at baking, Natsuki. Eh, well, you know. Just hurry and take one. Sayori so grabs one first, then Monica. I follow. It's delicious! Sayori so talks with her mouth full and has already managed to get icing on her face. Turn the cupcake around in my fingers, looking for the best angle to take a bite. Natsuki is quiet. Can't notice. <laughs> I can't help but notice her sneaking glances in my direction. Is she waiting for me to take a bite? I finally bite down. The icing is sweet and full of flavor. I wonder if she made it herself. Oh, this is really good. Thank you, Natsuki. Oh, oh, but why are you thanking me? It's not like I... Haven't I heard this somewhere before? I made them for you or anything. Eh? I thought you technically did. Sayori said, Well, maybe. But not for y you, you know. You. Dummy. Alright, alright. <laughs> I gave up on Natsuki's weird logic and dismissed the conversation. Yuri returns to the table, carrying it, he said. She carefully places a teacup in front of each of us before setting down the teapot next to the cupcake tray. Keep a whole tea set in this classroom? Don't worry, the teachers gave us permission. After all, doesn't a hot cup of tea have really helped you enjoy a good book? Ah, it, I, I guess. It. Don't let yourself get intimidated. Yours is trying to impress you. Eh? That's not. <laughs> insulted. Yuri looks away. I, I meant that you. I believe you. Well, tea and reading might not be a pastime for me, but I at least enjoy tea. It's true. I'm not a boy, though. Contrary to some beliefs. <laughs> I'm glad. Yuri faintly smiles to herself in relief. Monica raises an eyebrow, then smiles at me. So, what made you consider, consider the literature club? Um... I was afraid of this question. Something tells me I shouldn't tell Monica that I was practically, <laughs> practically dragged in here by Sayori. Well, I haven't joined any clubs yet and Sayori seemed really happy here, so... It's okay, don't be embarrassed. You'll make sure you feel right at home, okay? As president of the Literature Club, it is my duty to make the club fun and exciting for everyone. I'm sorry, Richard, I don't think you're gonna get much more titties than this. It's not that kind of a... Sam. Or maybe it is. I, I don't actually know. Is it? Sky? Should I be worried about titties? <laughs> Monica, I'm surprised. How come you decided to start your own club? <laughs> you could probably be a board member of any of the major clubs. Weren't you a leader of the debate club last year? Eh, well, you know. To be honest, I can't stand all of the politics around the major clubs. It feels like nothing but arguing about a budget and publicity and how to prepare for events. 
much rather take something I personally enjoy and make something special out of it. Just fly in here. And if it encourages others to get into literature, then I'm fulfilling that dream. Stupid fly! Eww. Monica really is a great leader. Yuri also nods in agreement. And I'm surprised there aren't more people in the club yet. It must be hard to start a new club. <laughs> you could put it that way. Not many people are very interested in putting out all the effort to start something brand new. Especially when it's something that doesn't grab your attention, like literature. You have to work hard to convince people that you're both fun and worthwhile. But it does make school events like festivals that much more important. I'm confident that we can really grow this club before we graduate. Right, everyone? <laughs> yeah! We'll do our best. You know it! Everyone enthusiastically agrees. Such different girls. All interested in the same goal. Monica must have worked really hard just to find these three. Maybe that's why they were all so delighted by the need, by the idea of a new member joining. Though I still don't really know if I can keep up with their level of enthusiasm about literature. So, ask what kind of things do you like to read? Well, uh... Considering how little I read in the past few years, I don't really have a good way of answering that. It's also kind of true. You know, I know. Don't read. <laughs> Manga. <laughs> I muttered quietly to myself, half joking. Natsuki's head suddenly perks up. Looks like she wants to say something, but she keeps quiet. Not much of a reader, I guess. Oh, well, that, that can change. What am I saying? I spoke without thinking after seeing Yuri's sad smile. Anyway, wh what about you, Yuri? Well, let's see. Yuri traces the rim of a teacup with her finger. My favorites are usually novels that build deep and complex fantasy worlds. The level of creativity and craftsmanship behind them is amazing to me. And telling a good story in such a foreign world is equally impressive. Yuri goes on, clearly passionate about her reading. She seemed, she seemed so re reserved and timid since the moment I walked in, but it's obvious by the way her eyes light up. She finds her comfort in the world of books, not people. Which, you know, I yeah, like a lot of things. Stories with deep psychological elements usually immerse me as well. Isn't it amazing how a writer can so deliberately take advantage of your own lack of imagination? imagination to completely throw you for a loop? Anyway, I've been reading a lot of horror lately. <sighs> uh oh. Ah, I, I read a horror book once. He desperately grasped at something I can relate to at the minimal level. At this rate, Yuri might as well be having a conversation with a rock. R really? I wouldn't have expected that, Yuri. With someone as gentle as you? I guess you could say that. But if a story makes me think, or it takes me to another world, then I really can't put it down. Mm. Surreal, surreal horror is often very successful in changing the way you look at the world. If only for a brief moment. Ugh, I hate horror. Uh oh? Why is that? Well, I just... Natsuki's eyes dart over to me for a split second. Never mind. That's right, you usually like to write about cute things, don't you, Natsuki? What? What gives you that idea? You left a piece of scrap paper behind last cold meeting. It looked like you were working on a poem called... Don't say it out loud! And get that back! <gasps> she totally has a crush on us. Totally. Fine, fine. <laughs> your cupcakes, your poems. Everything you do is just as cute as you are. 
Sayer slides up behind Natsuki and puts her hands on her shoulders. I'm not cute! <laughs> Natsuki, you wrote your own poems? Eh? Well, I guess sometimes. What do you care? I think that's impressive. Why don't you share them sometime? N no. Natsuki averts her eyes. You wouldn't like them. Ah, not a very confident writer yet. I understand how Natsuki feels. Sharing that level of writing takes more than just confidence. The truest form of writing is writing to oneself. You must be willing to open up to your readers, exposing your vulnerabilities and showing even the deepest reaches of your heart. Do you have a writing experience too, Yuri? Maybe if you share some of your work, you can set an example and help Natsuki feel comfortable enough to share hers. I guess it's the same for Yuri. Ah, I wanted to read everyone's poems. We all sit in silence for a moment. Okay, I have an idea, everyone. Hmm? Natsuki and Yuri looks quizzically at Monica. Let's all go home and write a poem of our own. Then, next time we meet, we'll share them with each other. That way, everyone is even. <laughs> hey, buddy. Um. Yeah, let's do it. Plus, now that we have a new member, I think it will help us all get a little more comfortable with each other and strengthen the bond of the club. Isn't that right, Usk? Monica smiles warmly at me once again. Hold on. There's still one problem. Huh? What is that? Now we're back to the original topic of me joining the club. I blood to come forth with what's been on my mind the entire time. I never said I would join this club. Sayori may have convinced me to stop by, but I never made any decision. I still have other clubs to look at, and... Um... Is my train of thought. All four girls stare back, stare back at me with dejected eyes. But, but I'm sorry. I, I thought. Hmm. Oh, it's, y you all. I, I'm defenseless against these girls. How am I supposed to make a clear-headed decision when it's like this? That is, if writing poems is the price I need to pay in order to spend every day with these beautiful girls. R right. Okay. I, I decided then. I'll join the literature club. One by one, the girls' eyes light up. Yeah! I'm so happy! Sayori wraps her arms around me, jumping up and down. Hey! You really did scare me for a moment. If we really just came for the cupcakes, I would be super pissed. And that makes it official. Welcome to the Literature Club. Ah, thanks, I guess. Okay, everyone. I think with that, we can officially end today's meeting on a good note. Everyone remember tonight's assignment. Write a poem to read the next meeting so we all can share. Monica looks over at me once more. Husk, I look forward to seeing how you express yourself. Hehe. <laughs> yeah. Can I really impress the class star Monica with my mediocre writing skills? I already feel the anxiety welling up inside me. Meanwhile, the girls continue to chit chat and as Yuri and Natsuki clean up their food. Hey, Usk, since we're already here, do you want to walk home together? That's right. Sayori and, ne and I never walk home together anymore because she's always stayed after school for clubs. Sure. M might as well. <laughs> Yay! <sighs> I'm not used to reading this much out loud. Especially not in English. I mean, I do talk a lot, I know that, but... Damn. Ugh. Talking and reading is very different things. <coughs> With that, the two of us depart the club room and make our way home. The whole way, my mind wanders back and forth between the four girls. 
Sayori, Natsuki, Yuri, and of course, Monica. And it's also quite funny because uh, my brother's friend, his Japanese girlfriend is called Natsuki. <laughs> and I'm like, ooh, I, I, I don't wanna, I don't wanna get with that just because of it. <laughs> Will I really be happy spending every day after school in a literature club? <laughs> yeah, I mean, whatever. If it gets too much, like, too much reading, I'll just stop, take a break, drink some tea, and maybe just click through it so you guys can read it yourselves. <laughs> Perhaps I'll have the chance to grow closer to one of these girls. Alright. I'll just need to make the most of my circumstances, and I'm sure good fortune will find me. And I guess that starts with writing a poem tonight. Whoa! Oh damn, now we're actually going into the game thing. Oh, why isn't Monica here? Maybe she's like the super difficult one? I have no idea, Bunny. Well, we'll see. This guy said it's a short game, so hopefully we might get through it. Wait. What? We'll, we'll see. Hmm. Um. Well, at least they made it kind of obvious which ones which. I think I'm gonna just like randomly click and see what happens, because I don't really want to go after anyone. So. That. That. And that. And that. And that. Ooh, perfect. Treasure, that's funny. Uh, singing is fun. Suicide is not fun. Oh, look, bunny! <laughs> uh, awesome. Marshmallows are very awesome. And going on holiday is cool. Uh, I do like don't know what that means. I like flowers and m music. Oh, but I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't know. Oh, six hours. Okay. Yeah, we'll we'll finish it next next week then, or like Friday maybe. I don't. Know. But I don't, I don't want to pick one. <laughs> Colors. Maybe we'll pick one of these after after this first thing, just to see what happens if anyone is like. Ugh. Yeah, I guess like most. Um. Most dating sims actually works best if you just pick one and go for them. Otherwise, it's like, oh, bad ending. You didn't date anyone. Derp. We'll see. We just. <laughs> I'm not gay. I'm, I'm a dude. <laughs> but yeah, we'll see after this one if anyone's like, oh, I like your poem, and maybe we'll. Go for that. Yeah. Hi again, Usk. Glad to see you didn't run away on us. Haha. <laughs> nah, don't worry. This might be a little strange for me, but at least I keep my word. Well, I'm back at the literature club. I was the last one to come in, so everyone is al already hanging out. Thanks for keeping your promise, Usk. I hope this isn't too overwhelming for a commitment for you. Making you dive headfirst into literature when you're not accustomed to it? 
Oh, come on. Like, he deserves any slack. So you already told me you didn't even want to join any clubs this year. Unless you're two. I don't know if you plan to just come here and hang out or what. But if you don't take us seriously, then you won't see the end of it. <laughs> Natsuki, you certainly have a big mouse for someone who keeps her manga collection in the club room. <laughs> Natsuki finds herself stuck between Sei and Monica and manga. Manga is literature! I mean, yeah, it's just illustrated literature. Swift, swiftly defeated, Natsuki pops back in her seat. Don't worry, guys. Oski's always giving his best as long as he's having fun. He helps me with busy work without me even asking. Like cooking, cleaning my room. How dependable. Sayori, that's because your room is messy, is so messy it's distracting. And you almost set your house on fire once. Is, is that so? <laughs> you two are really good friends, aren't you? I might be a little jealous. How come? You and us can become good friends too. And more than that, am I right? <laughs> uh. Sayori! Hmm? As usual, Sayori seems oblivious to the weird si situation she just put me into. Oh! Oh! Yuri even brought you something today, you know. Wait, Sayori! Huh? Me? Um, not really. Don't be shy. It's really nothing. What is it? N never mind. Sayori made it sound like a big deal, but it's really not. Uh, what do I do? Huh? I'm sorry, Yuri, I wasn't thinking. Guess that means it's up to me to rescue the situation. Hey, don't worry about it. First of all, I wasn't expecting anything in the first place. So any nice gesture from you is a pleasant surprise. It'll make me happy no matter what. Is that so? Yeah, I won't make it a big deal if you don't want it to be. <laughs> Alright, well, here. Yuri reaches into her bag and pulls out a book. I didn't want you to feel left out, so I picked out a book that I thought you might enjoy. It's a short read, you, sh you should keep your attention, if you even if you don't usually read. And we could, you know, discuss it if you wanted. This is... How is this girl accidentally being so cute? She even picked out a book that she, she thinks I like, despite me not reading much. Yuri, thank you. I'll definitely read this. I enthusiastically take the book. Phew! Well, you can read it at your own pace. I look forward to hearing what you think. Ugh, itchy. Now that everyone's settled in, I expect Monica to kick off some scheduled activities for the club. But that doesn't seem to be the case. Sayori and Monica are having a cheery conversation in the corner. Yuri's face is already buried in a book. I can't help but notice her intense expression, like she was waiting for this chance. Hey, excuse me. Meanwhile, Natsuki is running around in the closet. Man. It looks like no one wants to be bothered today. I slump down into the nearest desk. How am I supposed to occupy myself with something literature related by myself like this? I guess I could always read some of the book Yuri gave me. But I'm feeling a little too tired to read. I could probably fall asleep right now. Close my eyes and end up listening on listening in on Sayuri's conversation with Monica. We're probably gonna seem really lame compared to all the other clubs, though. Hmm. Well, we can't give up. A festival is our... <coughs> A festival is our chance to show everyone that literature is all about. The problem is that the idea of a literature club sounds, sounds too dense and intellectual. 
but it's not all like that, you know? You just need a way of showing that to everyone. Something that speaks to their, to their creative minds. Hmm... That doesn't solve the problem, though. Hmm? What do you mean? Even if we come up with the most fun thing ever... No one will come first place if it's a literature event. So it's more important to figure out how to get people to show up in the first place, you know? And after they come, we can do the thing to, s thing to speak to their creative minds. <laughs> I guess that's because I'm drinking tea and I have my robe on and just get very red. It's not because I'm blushing, it's because I'm warm. <laughs> and after they come, we can eat. Yeah. What's this? Sayori is taking this really seriously. It is rare, rare to hear her deliberating like this. Huh, that's a good point. In that case, do you think food will do the trick? <laughs> yeah. Uh, pink and pale. W what kind? Oh, well, I guess we could... Cupcakes! <laughs> Good thinking. Natsuki would love to do that. Ah, hey, you're right. Natsuki makes the best cupcakes. That works out perfectly. That wasn't why you suggested it. Cupcakes speak to my creative tummy. <laughs> cupcakes it is then. I'm hungry. Anyway, we still need to work on the details of the events itself. I find myself smiling. In the end, Sayori is still her useful self. But the real nice the unexpected reason I admire her. Unlike me, who has trouble finding any motivation at all, Sayori can put her mind into things and make them come to life. I suppose that's why I end up letting her get on my case about things. I can't help but wonder what it would be like to see the world through her eyes. Ooh, ah! I open my eyes to find Sayori's face filling my vision. I nearly, nearly fall out of my chair. Eh, sorry. Wait. Actually, I'm not sorry at all. It's your fault for sleeping like that. This is in a napping club. Aw, I wish I was in a napping club. Does our school have a napping club? <laughs> you're staying up late again, aren't you? Now that you're in a club, you're gonna have less time for anime, you know. You'll need to get used to it. Don't say that so loud. I glance over my shoulder to see if Monica overheard. It's true, though. Yeah. I know, I know. You're always looking out for me, Sayori. Hee! Yeah. It's what I do best. That's a problem. What about you? You look out for me better than I look out for myself. You're still oversleeping every day, aren't you? Eh? Not every day. It's not very convincing. Mm -hmm. My tea has gotten cold. I've got to finish this before it gets even colder. days this past week have you gotten up on time? It's... It's a secret. I knew it. Come on! At least give me the benefit of the doubt. Can't even do that. Look, Sayori, it's written all over you. Huh? Sayori glances around at herself. How is it written all over me? You were clearly in a rush this morning. Look, your hair is steady, sticking out all, all around here. Ah! I run my fingertips down the side of Sayori's hair, trying to straighten it out. Man, you really need a brush for this. Oh. My hair is just really hard to get it right. I don't want to fall for that. It's more than just your hair. Look, your bow isn't straight either. There's a toothpaste stain on your collar right there. Try to wipe off the stain with my finger. 
but nobody would ever notice that. Of course they would. Nobody's gonna tell you about it because they don't want you to embarrass you. Fortunately, I don't really care about that. you <laughs> And you don't even keep your blazer button up. Seriously, Sayori. Why do you think you don't have a boyfriend yet? Aww. That's so mean. Just because she a little, she's a little ditzy and likes to sleep in doesn't mean she shouldn't have a boyfriend. Colty. Eh? That's super mean. Sorry, but you'll thank me later. Start buttoning her blazes from the bottom. Once you see how much better it looks, you'll change your mind. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> <laughs> this is so funny. What is? Well, I was just thinking how weird it is to have a friend who does these kind of things. Super weird angle, by the way. Only look at her feet. Mm. Huh? Don't say that. It'll make me feel weird about it, stupid. It's okay, though. I'm happy we're like this. Aren't you? Eh, uh, I guess. Hey, be careful. Button might come off. Why is this one so hard to close? Because she has boobies, that's why. You are touching her boobies. I struggled to fully close the button near her chest. Does this even does this thing even fit you properly? <laughs> it did when I bought it. <sighs> if you ever button it, you wouldn't notice sooner that it doesn't fit you anymore. What are you smiling about? It means my boobs got bigger again. <laughs> Don't say that out loud. <laughs> anyway. You look much better now, so... Eh. Why does it feel so strange to see Sayori's blazer button up like that? But it's so stuffy! It's not sexual harassment, Bunny. He's her friend. I don't know. Uh... It's not worth it at all. Sayori hastily unbuttons her blazer once more. Phew! So much better. Sayori puts her arms out and twirls around. So if I keep it unbuttoned, I won't get a boyfriend, right? What kind of logic is that? Why are you saying that like it's a good thing? Because if I had a boyfriend, then he wouldn't even let you do things like this. And you take care of me better than anyone else would anyway. So that's why I'm keeping it unbuttoned. Stop saying all of these embarrassing things. earlier. Fine, fine, that's the deal. <laughs> because we really are taking better at taking care of each other than we are taking care of ourselves. Yeah, I guess so. Huh. So, maybe you should come wake me up in the morning. You're doing it again, Sayori. Ah, but I was joking that time. Man, it's impossible to tell we do something. Okay, everyone. Hmm? Monica suddenly calls out. Why don't we share the poems we wrote now? <laughs> Yay! Ask, I can't wait to read yours. Yeah, same. Feel, feel to sound enthusiastic, but Sayori still trots away to retrieve her poem. By the way, did you remember to write a poem last night? <laughs> yeah. My relaxation ends. I can't believe I agreed to do something so embarrassing. Couldn't really find much couldn't really find much inspiration since I've never really done this before. 
Well, now that everyone's ready, why don't you find someone to share it with? <coughs> I can't wait! Sayori and Monica enthusiastically pull out their poems. Sayori is an unwrinkled sheet of loose leaf torn from a spiral notebook. On the other hand, Monica wrote hers in a composition notebook. You can already see Monica's pristine handwriting from where I sit. Natsuki and Yuri reluctantly comply as well, reaching into their bags. I do the same myself. Who should I show my poem to first? Hmm. Sayori because Sayori is like hush oh, yeah she's she's our old friend but Monica is still like the club president let's go with Monica I should start with Monica yesterday she seemed eager to read my poem and I wanted to know I'm putting in effort I ask having a good time so far uh, yeah good glad to hear it by the way, since you're new and everything, if you ever have any suggestions for the club, like activities or things we can do better, I'm always listening. <laughs> she is, isn't she? Like the typical dead sea. I mean, all of these are just anime and manga stereotypes, but you know, stereotypes exist for a reason. Don't be afraid to bring things up, okay? Alright, I'll keep that in mind. I think we're gonna strip. Whoa! Of course I'll be afraid to bring things up. I'm much better off just going with the flow until I'm more settled in. Anyway, wanna share your poem with me? It's uh, kind of embarrassing, but I guess I have to. <laughs> Don't worry, ask. We're all a little embarrassed today, you know. But it's that sort of barrier we'll all learn to get past soon. Yeah, that's true. I had Monica in my poem. Hmm. I like this one. It makes me think of something Sayori would like. Oh. Uh, so we went for her, huh? <laughs> Is that so? You and Sayori are really good friends, right? I wouldn't be surprised if we had those sort of things in common. Ah, uh, well... We may be good friends, but Sayori and I are actually really different. <laughs> hmm... Well, that may be the case. But maybe there are also some similarities that you wouldn't expect. The way she talks about you, it sounds like the two of you really take care about each other's well-being. Even if you show it in different ways, you know, it ends up being more similar than you think. So I think that's the kind of vibe when I, I get when I read your poem. Hmm. Sure you're not reading into it too much? Meh, I could be. Oh gosh, I sound like Yuri. But in any case, Sayuri's writing has a kind of gentle feel to it. I can tell that she likes exploring with emotions, like happiness and sadness. Who knew that someone so happy would enjoy that sad things too? Yeah, that's totally unexpected. Well, to each their own. And you wouldn't be afraid to experiment a little bit either. I'm sure I'll end up trying different things a lot. It could take a while before I feel comfortable doing this. It's okay. I'd love to see you try new things. It's the best way to find it. Find the kind of style that suits you. Everyone else might be a little biased to, the, to their own kinds of styles, but I'll always help you to find what suits you the most. So don't force yourself to write the way everyone else makes you want to write. That, that's not what that said. <laughs> it's not like you have to worry about impressing them or anything. <laughs> or do I? <laughs> Anyway, you want to read my poem now? 
don't worry, I'm not very good. I sound pretty confident for someone who claims to not be very good. Well, that's because I have to sound confident. That doesn't mean I always feel that way, you know? I see. Well, let's read it then. Oh, gee. <laughs> it's italics. Ugh. Hole in wall. Couldn't have been me. See? The direction this sp spackle pur pur pr protrudes. Wow, this is so difficult to read. Oh, A noisy neighbor? An angry boyfriend? I'll never know. That wasn't hope. Appear in sight for a clue. No, you can't see. They're real. And blind like a film left out in the sun. But it's too late. My retinas. Already scorched with a permanent copy of a meaningless image. It's just a little hole. It wasn't too bright. It was too deep. Stretching forever into everything. A hold of infinite choices. I realize, realize now that I wasn't looking in. I was looking out, and he, on the other side, was looking in. <gasps> so, what do you think? Hmm, it's very freeform, if that's what you would call it. Sorry, I'm not really the right person to ask for feedback. Ah, that's okay. Yeah, that kind of style has gotten pretty popular nowadays. That is, a lot of poems have been putting emphasis on the timing between words and lines. When performed out loud, it can be really powerful. I guess I didn't do it justice then. <laughs> what was the inspiration behind this one? Ah. Uh, well, I'm not sure if I know how to put it. I guess you could say that I had some kind of epiphany recently. It's been influ influencing my poems a bit. An epiphany? Yeah, something like that. I'm kind of nervous to talk about deep stuff like that, but it's because coming off because it's kind of coming on strongly maybe after everyone is better friends with each other anyway here's Monica's writing tip of the day <laughs> well, that's, that's kind of her to hand out sometimes when you're writing a poem or a story your brain gets too fixated on a specific point if you try so hard to make it perfect then you'll never make any progress just force yourself to get, get something down on the paper and tidy it up later. Another way to think about it is this. If you keep your pen in the same spot for too long, you'll just get a big dark puddle of ink. So, if you, so just move your hand around and go with the flow. That's my advice for the day. Thanks for listening! say that she thought Sigmari would like it. Maybe we should listen. Even even if, like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, okay. stares at the poem. A minute passes, more than enough time for her to finish reading. Um... Oh! S sorry! I forgot to start speaking. <laughs> um... It's fine. Don't force yourself. I'm not. I just need to put my thoughts into words. first time writing a poem, right? Uh, yeah. What do you ask? I'm just making sure. I guess that it, that it might be after reading through it. Ah, so that bad. No? <laughs> Did I just raise my voice? Uh, so sorry. 
<laughs> Yuri buries her face in her hands. I couldn't help but notice that it's been several minutes and we really haven't gotten anywhere. It might take Yuri a while to get used to new people. That's fine, I really didn't notice. Uh, what were you saying? Right, um... It seems that there are specific writing habits that are usually typical of new writers. And having been through that myself, I kind of learned to pick up on them. I think the most noticeable thing I recognize in new writers is that they try to make their style very deliberate. In other words, they tend to pick a writing style separate from the topic matter, and they try to form fit the two together. The end result is that the, both the style and expressiveness are weakened. Once Yuri finds her train of thought, it's as if her demeanor totally changes. Her stammering is completely gone and she sounds like an expert. Of course, that's not, not something you can be blamed for. There are so many different skills and techniques that go into writing even a simple poem. Not just finding them and building them, but getting them to work together is probably the most challenging part. It might take you some time. But it all comes with practice, and learning by example, and trying new things. I also hope that everyone else in this club gives you valuable feedback. Natsuki might be a little biased, though. Biased? How? Um, well, never mind. I shouldn't be talking about people like that. Sorry. It's fine. I'm not sure if Juri is apologizing to herself, to me, or to Natsuki. Do you mind if I read your poem now? Please do. I'd love to share my thought process behind it. Yuri smiles dreamily. As if, as if that's a rare opportunity for her. Which in itself is kind of funny. After all, isn't this supposed to be a literature club? <laughs> it's even more italics. <laughs> Uh, ghost under the light. The tendrils of my hair illuminate beneath the amber glow. Bathing. It must be this one. The last remaining street light to have withstood the test of time. The last yet to be replaced by the sickening blue-green hue of the future. I bathe. Calm. Cobs? Calm. Breathing air of the present, but living in the past, the light flickers. I flicker back. I mean, the italics look pretty, but I have a difficult time reading them. <laughs> and it's just... My, my poor vision. It's blurry and it's... Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry I have such terrible handwriting. You do, lady, you do. It looks pretty, but it's unreadable. <laughs> what? I wasn't thinking that at all. But it took you a long time to read. Ah. Uh, <laughs> well, I just don't read the script very often. I actually think your handwriting is pretty. Hmm? That's a relief. Also, I like the poem. Even though it's short, it was really descriptive. It wasn't too short. I usually write longer poems. Not at all. I'm really glad you like it. I'll be honest. Then since our first time sharing, I wanted to write something a little more... mild. Something easy to digest, I suppose. Are you into ghosts, Yuri? Uh-huh. Actually, the story isn't about a ghost at all, Lusk. Really? You must have totally missed the point. Well, I suppose you only did glance after it after all. Over it. But remember that poems often express their own thoughts, feelings, and experiences in their work. <laughs> cat under my desk. I was wondering, like, I felt something wet on my foot. I didn't even notice it coming in. <laughs> often express their own thoughts, feelings, and experiences, you know. They usually do more than tell a simple story or paint a picture. 
in this case, perhaps the subject of the poem is only being symbolically compared to a ghost, lingering in their last remaining place of comfort, unable to let go of the past, and soon will be left with nothing. That's a lot more solid putting it that way. I hadn't even thought of that. That's impressive. It's nothing, really. Well, it makes me happy to think. It makes me happy that you think that. Just remember, it won't be long before you pick up on these things, too. Yeah, maybe you're right. I guess I'll have to keep trying. I'm counting on you. I guess we have to show it to everyone. So, let's just pick whoever. Let's pick Cupcake. It's about what I expected from someone like you. That's a little blunt. Actually, why don't we get to see what we wrote? I think that would be a, like a, uh, you know, um, what are they called? Um, Mad Libs? Except more comprehensive than Mad Libs because, you know, they can get pretty crazy. That would have been much more fun. We'll see what we write just picking a bunch of words and hoping it will match any of their tastes. But, mm. Yeah, maybe. Well, excuse me. It's not like I said it was bad. It's just that it didn't invoke any emotions. So, basically, it's not cute enough for your tastes. You want to get smacked? I'll pass. Well, anyway, I guess I need to show you mine. Not that you like it. See, this, this, this I can read. This is good. <laughs> Aw, what a shame. Oh well. Eagles can fly. Monkeys can climb. Crickets can leap. Horses can race. Owls can seek. Cheetahs can run. Eagles can fly. People can try. But that's about it. <laughs> yeah, told you that you weren't gonna like it. <laughs> I like it. What? Just be honest. I am. Why was I convinced that I wouldn't like it? Well, because everyone in high school thinks that writing has to be all sophisticated and stuff. So people don't even take my writing seriously. But isn't it the point of poems for people to express themselves? Your writing style wouldn't make, make your message so less valid. Yeah, exactly. It's like when it's easy to read but it hits you hard. Like in this poem. Seeing everyone around you do great things can be really disheartening. So I decided to write about it. Yeah, I understand. But the other nice things about the other nice thing I'm thinking about simple writing is that it puts more weight on the wordplay. Like I set it up for a rhyme at the end, but I made it fall flat on purpose. It helps bring out the feeling on the last line. So you did. I guess more you've been in of it than I realized. That's what it means to be a pro. I'm glad you learned something. Didn't expect that from the youngest one here, did ya? Y yeah, guess not. <laughs> he decided to humor her with that last comment. I don't really care how old anyone is, but if Natsuki is feeling proud, then I wouldn't take that away from her. Like her hairstyle. I think this is, this is like the most adorable hairstyle ever. I want it myself and I want everyone else to have it. Maybe not in this color, but it's so, so cute. Oh my goodness. This is so good, Elisk. Huh? I love it. I had no idea you were such a good writer. 
Yeah, she she'll like it. <laughs> Sayori, you must be seriously overreacting. I'm not a good writer at all. I honestly have no idea what I'm doing. Well, maybe that's why. Because I have no idea what I like either. <laughs> Jeez. Your opinion was way more constructive than this. <laughs> Are you sure you don't like it just because I wrote it? Hmm? Well, I'm sure that's part of it. I think I understand you more than a lot of pe other people, you know? So when I read your poem, or read your poem, it's not just a poem. It's an ask poem! And it makes it feel extra special. Like I can feel your feelings in it. Sayori hugs the cheat against her chest. You're so weird, Sayori. Hey. <laughs> really happy that you've wrote one. I'm really happy, really happy just that you wrote one. It just reminds me of how you're really part of the club now. <laughs> Not to mention the fact that I'm standing in front of you in the club room. Uh, well, of course. I'm not really into it yet, but doesn't mean I'll break my promise. See? It's like you said before, Usk. Deep down, you're not selfish at all, you know? Trying new things like this for other people? That's something that only really good people do. Thanks, Sayori. I'm not sure if I see the full picture of my motive here. Then again. I can't deny that she's the part of the reason I joined. Knowing how much this means to her and all. Yeah! And I'm gonna make sure you have lots of fun here, okay? That'll be my way of thanking you. Alright, I'm gonna hold you to that then. Yay! Now you'll read my poem too, right? Don't worry, I'm really bad at this. <laughs> we'll see about that. Sunshine, the way you glow through my blinds in the morning makes me feel like you miss me. Kissing my forehead to help me out of bed, making me rub the sleep before my eyes. Are you asking me to come out and play? Are you trusting me to wish away a rainy day? I look above, the sky is blue. It's a secret, but I trust you too. If it wasn't for you, I could sleep forever. But I'm not mad. I want breakfast. <laughs> it sounds kind of like me. Especially this part. Like, I'm asleep. And then I'm hungry. <laughs> Sayori. This is just a guess, but... Did you wait until this morning to write this? No. It's just a little bit. I can't answer just a little bit to a yes or no question. <laughs> I forgot to do it last night. Well, at least it makes me feel a little better about myself. Don't be mean. I still tried my best. Ah, yeah. I didn't mean to say it was a bad poem. It just came out nice, or how should I put it? It sounds just like you. Really? Yeah, especially that last line. <laughs> I made eggs and toast. Even though you were late to school, it's fine to skip breakfast. Are you fighting in my chat? Don't fight in my chat, Bunny. You know you're more the more of a woman than. Julia's. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> it's a diff. <laughs> uh, I get all cranky. Well, I guess there's no point in arguing. Anyway, thanks for showing me. Hee <laughs> hee. This was so much fun. Monica's the best. Huh. Yeah. But next time, I won't forget. 
and I'm gonna write the best poem ever. <laughs> well, I guess I look forward to it. Phew! Yes, that's everyone. Glance around the room. It was a little more stressful than I anticipated. It's as if everyone was judging me for my mediocre writing abilities. Even if they're just being nice, there's no way my poems can stand up to theirs. This is a literature club, after all. I hate this word. Literature. I'm gonna start saying defibrillator instead. <laughs> I guess that's what I ended up getting myself into. Oops. <laughs> Across the room, Sayuri and Monica are happily chatting. My eyes land on Yuri and Natsuki. They gingerly exchange sheets of paper, showing their respective poems. <laughs> Thank you, Skype. <laughs> Wait. If you type it out like that, it makes it sound like a rat in a church being on fire. Church rat on fire. <laughs> oh, I'm getting tired. Uh, reading too much. As they read in tandem, I watch each of their expressions change. Natsuki's eyebrows, eyebrows furrow in frustration. Meanwhile, Yuri smiles sadly. What went this language? Huh? Um, did you just say something? Oh, it's nothing. Natsuki dismissively returns the poem to the desk with one hand. I guess you could say it's fancy. Ah, thanks. Yours is cute. Cute? Did you completely miss the symbolism or something? It's clearly about the feeling of giving up. How can that be cute? I know that. It just meant the language. What the hell kind of words are you? Judicial? I don't even know what that word means. I was trying to say something nice. Try that hardest to come up with something nice to say. Thanks, but it's re it really didn't come out nice at all. Um. Well, I do have a couple of suggestions. Hmm. If I was looking for suggestions, I would have asked someone who actually liked it. Which people did, by the way. So you already liked it, and Usk did too. So based on that, I'd be glad to give you some suggestions of my own. First of all. Excuse me, I appreciate the offer, but I spent a long time establishing my writing style, and I don't expect it any to change it anytime soon, unless of course I come across something particularly inspiring, which I haven't yet. <laughs> and that's like my poem too, you know. He even told me I w he was impressed by it. Natsuki suddenly stands up. <gasps> the music stopped. What happened to the music? Oh, I didn't realize you were so invested in trying to impress our new member, Yuri. Eh? It's not what I... Uh, uh, you're just... Yuri stands up as well. Maybe you're just jealous that, jealous that us appreciates my advice more than he appreciated yours. Huh. And how do you know it didn't appreciate my advice more. Are you that full of yourself? I... No. If I was full of myself, I would deliberately go out of my way to make everything I do a really cutesy. Mm. 
Um, is everyone okay? Well, you know what? I wasn't the one whose boobs magically grew a size bigger as soon as Usk started growing showing up. Natsuki! Um, Natsuki, that's a little... This doesn't involve you. I don't feel like fighting, guys. Suddenly, both girls turned toward me as if they just noticed I was standing there. Usk! She... She was trying to look, make me look bad. That's not true. She started it. If she could... If she could get over herself and learn to appreciate that simple writing is more effective, then this wouldn't have happened in the first place. What's the point in making your poems all convoluted for no reason? In the meaning, it should jump out at the reader, not force them to have to figure it out. Help me explain that to her, Musk. Wait. There's a reason we have so many deep and expressive words in our language. It's the only way to convey complex feelings and the meaning of them, meaning them most effectively. Avoiding them is not only unnecessary in limiting yourself, it's also a waste. Do you understand that, right, Osk? Um... Well? Are we gonna have to make a choice? <laughs> I don't want to make a choice. <laughs> oh well. How did I get dragged into this in the first place? It's not like I know anything about writing. But whomever I agree with will probably think more highly of me. So of course it's going to be... But if, if we ask for help, then Sayori will probably be like, Oh my god, I love you. Okay, 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 for real. Real talk. I personally liked Yuri's poem better. Why? I don't know. I yeah, like her writing. I am. Oh, but I don't want to be. Can I change it? <laughs> I guess I picked the most like Sayori kind of words in my poem. Try it. If it doesn't work, we'll try to go back to say her. But I, yeah, I think I'll go with Yuri. Cause her her writing style is most like my own. It spoke to me. <laughs> Not really, but I did like it. It was it was pretty and descriptive. So. Natsuki. You're right that I liked your poem. See? Wait! It's not an excuse for you to be so mean. You shouldn't pick a fight just because someone's opinion is different. It's not what happened at all. Yuri wouldn't even take my poem seriously. Hmm. I understand. Yuri? Hmm? You're serious. You're a seriously talented writer. It's no secret that I was impressed. Well, that's... But here's the thing. No matter how simple or refined someone's writing style is, they're still putting their feelings into it. It becomes something really personal. That's why Nats Natsuki felt threatened when you said her poem was cute. I see. I didn't notice that. I... I'm sorry. Uh... But Natsuki, you took it way too far. Yuri means well, and if you just told her how you felt, this wouldn't have happened in the first place. Are you kidding? That's exactly what I did. It was her that... Natsuki, I think that's enough. Fly is still in here. You both said some things that you didn't mean. Yuri apologized. Don't you think you should too? 
Natsuki clenches her fist. In the end, nobody has taken her side. Oh, now I feel bad. <laughs> She's trapped. At this point, being defiant is only because she can't handle the pressure. Pressure. I end up even feeling bad for her. Um. Sometimes when I'm hurt, it has to take a walk and clear my head. Say, so she doesn't need it. You know what? I'm gonna do that. It'll spare me from having to look at all your faces right now. Without warning, Natsuki snatches her own poem from the desk and storms out. On her way out, she crumbles up the poem with her hand and throws it in the trash. Natsuki, she really need, didn't need to do that. I look across the room. Yuri has her chin buried in her hands while she stares down at her desk. He gingerly approaches her, approach her, and sits in an adjacent chair. <sighs> Everything alright? I can't believe I acted like that. You probably hate me now. No, Yuri. How could anyone have gotten frustrated? How could anyone not have gotten frustrated after being treated like that? You handled it as well as anyone could. I don't think any less of you. Well, alright. I believe you. Thanks, Husk. You're too kind. I'm thankful to have you a part of this club now. Uh, it's nothing. One more thing. Um, the one thing that Natsuki said about, you know, I would never do anything so shameful. So, hmm? What thing did Natsuki say? Breast implant? Is that what they're saying? I didn't even notice. Because I don't look at her boobies. Did she get get a push-up bra maybe? I don't know. Mm. Mm. Ah, good idea. Make enough for more than one person, okay? Y yeah. Okay, everyone. Just about time for us to leave. How did you all feel about sharing poems? It was a lot of fun. Well, I'd say it was worth it. It was alright. Mostly. Husk, how about you? Yeah, I'd say the same. It was a new thing to talk about with everyone. <laughs> well, I mean, it's... In most, or a lot of the Asian countries, there is, um, it's very common for young girls to get the double eyelid surgery as a graduation present. So, I don't know, maybe, like, it's a custom for them to get surgery at, like, 18 or 17 or even 16, I don't know. Maybe it was a push-up bra thing. Well, I don't know. But I don't care. <laughs> awesome! In that case, we'll do the same thing tomorrow. Maybe you'll learn something from your friends too. So your poems will turn out even better. Yeah, nose and chin and like, everything. Yeah. Maybe you should put on uh, a smaller jacket. Like, hey, I got boobies up to my neck now. I didn't notice any change in the art artwork. There may have been, and there may not have been. Listen, whatever, whatever, boobies. <laughs> I think to myself, did I learn a little more about the kinds of poems everyone likes? But then I look, that means I can at least do a better job at impressing those I want to impress. I nod to myself with newfound determination. Uh, ready to walk home? Sure, let's go. Yeah. Sayori beams at me. Truly it has been a while since Sayori and I have spent this much time together. I can't really say I'm not enjoying it either. 
say where I... About what happened earlier. What do you mean? You know, between Yuri and Natsuki. Does that kind of thing happen often? <laughs> no, no, no. It's really the first time I've seen them fight like that. I promise they're both wonderful people. You don't, you don't hate them, do you? No, I don't hate them. I just wanted your opinion, that's all. You can see why they make good friends with you. You! You know, us. It's nice to get to spend much time with you in the club. <laughs> on for it. It's so pretty. But I think seeing you get along with everyone is what makes me happiest. And I think everyone really likes you too. But yeah, every day is going to be so much fun. <sighs> Looks like Sayori still hasn't caught on to, on to the kind of situation I'm in. Sure, being friends with everyone is nice, but does it really need to stop there, am I right? We'll just have to wait and see what the future holds, Sayori. <laughs> I pat Sayori on the shoulder. I said that more to myself than to her, but it's easy to use Sayori as an internal monologue sometimes. Okay! Yeah. Let's do this! Okay, so, because Monica isn't here, I'm guessing that she's like the one that's more difficult to go for. And she's like ooh, the boss, boss of dating lady. But okay, if we want to go after Yuri, we should... Do dark and spooky and uh, dark, spooky horror like kind of thingies. <laughs> so, um, horror, broken, agonizing. Fortune, melancholy, climax, mm -hmm. tears, nightgown, um, and starscape, sure, that's pretty, uh, raindrops, cry. Jump? Um, waterfall? Dark? <laughs> um, well, I'm sorry. <laughs> it, it's the poem writing. I guess it's more like just, um, Word, associ word associations like uh, you know when you're doing the uh, Harry uh, the Pottermore house thingy you're supposed to click on a bunch of images and, and it'll be like oh if you pick the unicorn you're a Ravenclaw I guess this is kind of like that and she Yuri's into like the dark, spoopy stuff, and she's like so cute, and she's a happy-go-lucky kind of thing. So we're trying to pick every kind of depressing, dark, emo shit we can find. <laughs> so, so like, yeah, it's like empty graveyard. Um, sensation, unrestrained sadness. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah. Yeah, I, I thought so. Cage. Frightening. Ooh. Oh, I'm sorry. Ah, uh, hey, wizard. You missed. A girl fight. <laughs> Another day passes and it's time for the club meeting already. I've gotten a little more comfortable here over the past couple days. Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Hi, yes. <laughs> Yo, Sayori. Looks like you're in a good mood today. <laughs> I'm just still not used to you being in the club, that's all. I see. That's a pretty simple thing to get you in a good mood. But I guess it's always the simple things for you anyway. <laughs> Speaking of which, I'm kinda hungry. Will you come with me to buy a snack? No thanks. Huh? That, that's not like you at all. I have my reasons. Why don't you take a look at your purse, Sayori? Eh? Huh? Why that? All of a sudden. No reason, really. I just wanted to look at it. <laughs> Sayori nervously retrieves her coin purse. She, sh she fumbles with the latch and gets it open. Then she turns it upside down and lets the contents spill out onto the desk. Only two small coins fall out. <laughs> knew it. I can see right through you, Sayori. That's not fair. What did you even know? It's simple. If you had enough money in the first place, you would have bought a snack before coming to the club room. So, either you're not hungry and want an excuse to take a walk, or you plan to conveniently forget that you spent all your money so that I will lend you some. But here's one more thing. You're always hungry. And so, that only leaves one option. <laughs> I give up. Don't make me feel guilty. If you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. <sighs> Yuri suddenly giggles. Hmm? I didn't notice that she was listening in. Her face is in her book as always. <laughs> I wasn't listening or anything. It was just something in my book. Yuri! Tell us to let you borrow some money. That's... Don't get me involved like that, Sayori. Besides, you should only buy what you can responsibly afford. And frankly, after pulling a mischievous little stunt like that, your suffering is fair enough retribution. Ah, <sighs> did it just... I, I didn't mean that. I got too absorbed in my book. Ah. Uh, <laughs> I really like it when you speak your mind, Yuri. It doesn't happen much, but it's a fine side of you. That's... There's no way you could think that. You were right, though. I did something bad, and now I have to accept the revolution. Retribution. That. Still, coming from you, Sayori. I guess there's a little devil inside of us, isn't there? <laughs> Let her fool you. Sayori knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys she was bringing me into the club before she even told me. But you wouldn't have come if it weren't for the cupcakes. So I had to trick Natsuki into making them. Come on, give me more credit than that, Sayori. Yeah. What? Did someone get slapped? Out of nowhere, something smacks Sayori in the face and tumbles onto and tumbles onto the desk. Ow! What was? Hmm? A cookie? <laughs> Is this where the spooky things start happening? Sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Sayori glances around. Is this a miracle? It's because I paid my restitution! Retribution. I 
actually that one almost worked. Yeah. I was just gonna give it to you. Okay, it's not spoopy things. Oh. But then I heard you blab about the cupcakes. It was totally worth seeing your reaction though. Ha! <laughs> That's a key. It's so nice of you. I'm so happy. Sayori hugs the cookie. Jeez, just eat it. Sayori rappled into tear soap. <laughs> tear soap in the wrapper. Takes a big butt bite. Time. Usually, though, it, it's um, kind of better with build up anyway. If you get to know the characters and all of that shit. I'm not. I'm not in any hurry to jump into Evil Within. I guess I just finished Doom, which is a spoopy action shooter. It's kind of nice to just. If it's just for a week. True, good. Mm. So you're suddenly clasps her hands over her mouth. I bit my dog. Hehehe. <laughs> You're going through a lot of just one cookie. Natsuki takes a bite of, bite of her own cookie. Ah, yours look really good too, Natsuki. Can I try it? Jeez. Beggars can't be choosers, but yours is chocolate. Yeah, what do you think I gave you that one? Fine. Still, I'm really happy that you shared this one with me. Hehe. <laughs> so Yuri gets out of his seat and goes behind Natsuki and wraps her arms around her. Ah, jeez. I get it, I get it. Cookie still in hand, Natsuki reaches up <laughs> to nudge Sayori off of her. Um. So Yuri suddenly leans down and takes a bite out of Natsuki's cookie. Hey! Did you seriously just do that? Uh-huh. Mouthful, Sayori trots away to safety. <laughs> Yuri and I laugh as well. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes. <laughs> Monica, can you tell Sayori? Natsuki glances around. Monica isn't in the cloakroom. Ugh. Where's Monica anyway? Good question. When have you heard anything about her being late today? Not me. Yeah, I haven't either. Hmm. That's a bit unusual. <laughs> I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. She probably just had something to do today. She's pretty popular after all. Huh? You don't think she. She has a. Eh, I wouldn't be surprised. She's probably more desirable than all of us combined. Eh, that's true. Excuse me? Suddenly the door swings open. Sorry, I'm, I'm super sorry. Ah, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Monica chose the club over her boyfriend after all. Where's a strong will? Boyfriend? What on earth are you talking about? Monica quizzically again glances at me. Ah, never mind that. What held you up anyway? Ah. Well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kinda just lost track of time. <laughs> that makes no sense though. I've heard the bell ring at least. I must not have heard it since I was practicing, practicing piano. Piano? I was not aware that you played music as well, Monica. I don't really. I just kind of started recently. I've always wanted to learn to play piano. That's so cool! You should play something for us, Monica. That's. Monica looks at me. Maybe once I can get a little bit better, I will. Sounds cool. I'll also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Usk. 
Monica smiles sweetly. Uh, I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. Looks, that looks right. Ha, uh, don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently. And I'd really love the chance to share once I'm ready. <laughs> I see. In that case, best of luck. Thanks! So I didn't miss anything, did I? Not... not really. Oh, really, wizard? That's so... That's bullshit. Cat hair? Or my own hair, probably. Choose to leave out Seriori's mischievous escapade. I'm not sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. It looks like everyone has settled down. Sayori has somehow already finished her entire cookie. Yuri is back to her book and Natsuki disappeared into the closet. I'm really curious to talk to Yuri a little bit more. See? We picked the right words! Yay! <laughs> but at the same time, I wouldn't feel bad for distracting her from reading. Catch a glimpse over, over catch a glimpse of the cover of her book. Looks like the same book that she lent to me. More than that, she seems to be on the first few pages. Ah. Crap. I think she noticed me looking at her. She sneaks another glance at me and our eyes meet for a split second. But that only makes her hide her face and teeth her in her book. Sorry. I was just spacing out. I muttered this, sensing I made her uncomfortable. Oh, it's fine. <laughs> if I was focused, then I probably wouldn't have noticed in the first place. But I'm just rereading a bit of this, so. That's the book you gave me, right? Mm hmm. Why don't you reread some of it? Not for any particular reason. Just curious, how come you have two copies of the same book? Ah, well, when I stopped at the bookstore yesterday, uh, that's not what I meant. I mean, just happened to buy two of them. Ah, I see. There's something fairly obvious here that Yuri isn't telling me, but I decide to let it go. I'll definitely just start reading it soon. I'm glad to hear. Once it starts to pick up, you might have a hard time putting it down. It's a very engaging and relatable story. Is that so? What's it about, anyway? Well... Hmm. Yuri closes the book and scans her eyes over her back. The book is titled Portrait of Marco. There's an ominous looking eye symbol on the front cover. Uh, Alright. I just wanted to make sure I don't ac accidentally give anything away. Basically, it's about this girl in high school who moves in with her long lost younger sister. But as soon as she does so, her life gets really strange. She gets targeted by these people who escape from a human experiment prison. And while her life is in danger, she needs to desperately choose who to trust. No matter what she does, she ends up destroying most of her relationships, and her life starts to fall apart. Uh, that's kind of... Dark, isn't it? <laughs> Your made it sound like it was gonna be a nice story. So that dark turn came out of nowhere. Ha <laughs> <laughs> Yuri gently giggles all of a sudden. Are you not a fan of that sort of thing, Ask? N no, it's not that. I mean, I can definitely enjoy those kinds of stories, so don't worry. I hope so. Yeah, I totally forgot that Yuri is into those things. <laughs> She's so shy and reclusive on the outside, but her mind seems to be so completely different. Dropped a rock. <laughs> My beautiful 
Dylan Rock. It's just that those kind of stories, it challenge you to look at life from a strange new perspective. And when horrible things happen, not just because someone wants to be evil, but because they have their own goals or their own philosophy that they believe in, then suddenly, when you thought you related to the protagonist, they're made out to be the naive one for letting their one-sided morals interfere with the villain's plans. I I I'm rambling, am I? Aren't I? Not again. Sorry. Hey, d don't apologize. I haven't lost interest or anything. Well, I guess it's alright then. But I feel like I should let you know I had this problem. When I let things like books and writing fill my thoughts, I kind of forget to pay attention to other people. So I'm sorry if I end up saying something strange. And please stop me if I start talking too much. That's... I really don't think you need to worry. <laughs> that just means you're passionate about reading. Unlike me. The least I can do is listen. It's a... Lit... Literature. <laughs> Club after all. Ah. That's... Well, that's true. In fact... I might as well get started reading it, right? You don't have to. <laughs> what are you saying? Just a moment ago you were looking forward to it. Let me just get the book. Quickly retrieve the book that I had put into my bag. Alright, it's fine if I sit here, right? I'll slip into the seat next to Yuri's. Ah, uh, yeah. Are you sure? You seem a little apprehensive. That's... I'm sorry. It's not that I don't want you to. It's just... Something I'm not very used to. That is, reading in company with someone. I see. Well, just tell me if I end up distracting you or anything. Alright. I open the book and start the prologue. I soon understand what Yuri means about reading in company. It's as if I can feel her presence over my shoulder as I read. It's not a particularly bad thing. Maybe a little distracting, but the feeling is somewhat comforting. Yuri's in the corner of my eye. I realize that she's not actually looking at her own book. I glance over. It looks like she's reading from my book instead. Sorry! I was just... Yuri, you really apologize a lot, don't you? I do? I don't really mean to. Sorry. I mean... Haha. <laughs> Here, this should work, right? Slide my desk and I'll slide my desk until it it's up against yours, and I hold my book more between the two of them. Ah, uh, I suppose so. Yuri timidly closes her own copy. Once we each lean in a little bit, our shoulders are almost touching. Oh. <gasps> <gasps> Feels like my left arm is in the way, so instead I use my right hand to hold the book open. I guess that makes it kind of difficult to turn the page. Here. Yuri takes her left arm and holds the left side of the book between her thumb and her forefinger. Ah. I do the same with my with my right arm on the right side of the book. That way, I turn a page and Yuri slides it under her thumb after it flips to her side. But in holding it like this, we're huddled even closer than together than before. It's actually kind of distracting me. It's as if I can feel the warmth of Yuri's face when she's in the corner of my vision. Are you ready? Hmm? Turn the page. Ah, sorry. I think I got a bit distracted for a second. I glance over at Yuri's face again, and her eyes meet. I don't know if I'll be able to keep up with her. Ah, uh, that's okay. You're not as used to reading, right? I don't mind being patient if, it's, if it takes you a bit longer. It's probably the least I can do, since you've been so patient with me. Yeah, thanks. We continue reading. 
Yuri no longer asks me if I'm ready to turn the page. Instead, I just assume that she finish it, finishes the page before me, so I turn a bit by my own volition. I continue the first chapter in silence. Even so, turning each page always feels like an intimate exchange. My thumb gently letting go of the page, letting it flutter over to her side as she catches it, catches it under her own thumb. Hey, Yuri. This might be a silly thought, but the main character reminds me of you a little bit. You think so? How does she? Well, I guess she's more blunt in a lot of ways. But she also second guesses all of her all of the things that she says and does. Like she's afraid she'll do something wrong. It's not like that it's not like I can see in, into your head or anything. But it kind of reminiscent of some of your mannerisms. I, I see. You remain silent for a minute, moment, but I that's probably a terrible thing to have in common with her. Uh, it's so embarrassing that you think that. Wait, I didn't mean it in a bad way or anything. Sorry, I didn't really know you were self-conscious about this sort of thing. I guess I more meant it. Kinda cute. Huh. What are you saying all of a sudden? Uh, okay, everyone. I think it's about time we shared today's poem with each other. We might not have enough time for, if we wait too long. <laughs> oh, you won't hear my lovely reading voice. It's so terrible. Actually, you know what? I was thinking. That I was uh, gonna do some reading on the stream out of my uh, my Lovecraft book, like in between games, just uh, <laughs> just a few. I mean, not not a few, but like do one maybe before I start a new game or right after I finish one, because I have such trouble with um, <laughs> reading. Because I have so much trouble reading out loud, because I, I don't know when to pause. It's so unnatural, instead of speaking. Because speaking you can do without pausing if it, if it comes naturally, but reading is it's such a different thing. <laughs> no, right. Reading every note in layers of fear and amnesia, not. Was not enough. We need more reading. Yeah. But also, like, because Lovecraft's language is so different, it would be an extra challenge, I guess, to it. There are some, some words in that when I read it before going to bed, I'm like, the hell is this word? I do not know what this word means, but I, I still understand the context, but like... Wow. <laughs> okay, let's let's continue this reading date. Or whatever. Meh. Yuri exhales. Spared from finishing her thought. Is that alright, Yuri? I look kinda down. I'm sorry if you haven't been looking forward to this. Uh, it's not. It's fine. Yuri releases her hand from the book, causing it to close on top of my thumb. Alright. Guess I'll do some more reading tonight. Or would you prefer if <laughs> prefer I only read it with you? Um... I guess I don't have too much preference I either way. Hmm. In that case, I'll read a little more tonight. It'll be more fun to read with you after it picks up a bit, you know? That's good reasoning. <laughs> In that case, 
Feel free to finish the first two chapters in your own time. Alright. Stand up. Make a mental note of where I left off in the book, then slip it back into my book. Bo in my bed? My bag. Sorry, it doesn't. I also f f feel like Monica is kind of the checkup character. It's like if you're not sure which character you have written the poem for, you can be like, "Hey, Monica, which one, which one is this for?" And she'll be like, "Oh, this is what so and so would like. Go show it to them." But I also don't think it really matters because I have to show it to everyone anyway. So let, let's go, let's go for our purple haired shy girl. possible to get with Monica. I mean, it should be. Which it might also be uh, like some special... <laughs> some special special character. Because I know... Uh, out of the many dating sims I've watched... <laughs> It's always like the, the friend. If it, if it isn't obvious that you can date them like it is with Sayori here, it's uh, like you have to do some kind of extra thing to, to date them. And it's usually like, oh, you have to do this every morning, or you have to like leave an apple on your desk every day, or something like that. But this doesn't seem to have that. Might be some very particular words that are hers. We're not going for her. No, anyway, so. Maybe on a second playthrough? <coughs> Let's see what you've written for today. Mm. Mm. So, what the hell is that hand anatomy? Is it. Yeah. Yuri stares at the poem with a surprised expression on her face. Do you like it? Ask. How did you pick up on this so quickly? Just yesterday I was telling you the kind of techniques worth practicing. <laughs> Maybe that's why. You did a good job explaining. I really wanted to try to give it more imagery. Yuri visibly swallows. Even her hands appear sweaty. I'm not used to this. Used to what? I don't know. It's fine. Take your time. Yuri breathes and collects her thoughts. I know that Yuri likes to think before she speaks, so I offer that patience to her. Yeah. Just being appreciated like this, I guess. Stupid, but seeing someone motivated by my writing just makes me really happy. Are you saying you've never shared your writing before? Yuri nods. Really? I don't believe it. I really only ever write for myself. And besides, people would just laugh at me. You really think that? Again, Yuri nods. Huh. Even your close friends? Yuri doesn't respond to that. Aww, she doesn't have any close friends. I'm so sad. I wonder why. Anyway. Do you want to share the poem you wrote today? 
Yeah, I do. If it's with you. Oh, I picked the one with the most difficult handwriting. Why? Why? <laughs> yeah, I'll be her close friend. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See the eyebrow wiggle? Not so much on the camera, but it's there. <laughs> the raccoon! It happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scuttering of a raccoon outside my window. They have raccoons in Japan? Uh, yeah, tanuki. <clears throat> it was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as, as an, an ordinary human. I gave the raccoon a piece of my bread, my subconscious, well aware of the consequences, well aware that that a raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom. The bread, my hungry curiosity, the raccoon, m an urge. The moon in, in, in increments, I guess? Increments its face and reflects that much more light off of my cutting knife. The very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread, fresh and soft. The raccoon becomes excited. But perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions on the newly satisfied animal. <laughs> the raccoon has taken following me. You can see that we've gotten used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so we, so my bread is always handy. Every time I br brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows its excitement. The rush of blood, classic Pavlovian conditioning. I slice the bread, and I feed myself again. <laughs> um, I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't begin to imagine what this poem is about. That's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style. Using the poem as a canvas to express vivid imagery and conveying emotions through them. I should stop playing with this rock and just keep dropping it. There. <laughs> Yeah, if I take it at face value, I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well, I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I wanted to express the way it feels for me to indulge in my more usual hobbies. It's those sort of sorts of things I'm usually forced to keep to myself. So I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Why do you keep them to yourself? B because they're embarrassing and people would make fun of me. Don't you have anything like that? Was well, yeah, I guess I do. I feel like everyone has a little something like that. The best we can do is respect each other and our individualities. Even if it's more difficult sometimes, even if it's difficult sometimes, and something makes us uncomfortable. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I would probably hate myself. I might be ranting a little bit now. <laughs> now, Sky, I'm curious. Who, who did you go for? Or is it too personal? Maybe you don't want to admit who you like. Hmm. <laughs> I'm glad you're a good listener. Okay. Oh, you went for her too? Damn. Similar tastes in women. <laughs> Actually, if I if I was gonna go for one of these people. Oh you did? I must have missed that. 
if I personally was gonna go after one of these. I think it might, might have been Sayori or Monica. Because Sayori is kind of like that, that... I mean, I, I know you think she's annoying, Julia, but she's kind of like that person that I from time to time seen myself as the stereotype when I've a long time ago watched anime and read manga. I was also kind of like, yeah, I, I, I'd be really good friends with her. But Monica is the prettiest one, maybe. Also being the popular, like, super intelligent girl, she'd be like, Wow, she's so pretty. Just stare at her and be like, oh, I would never be able to get with that. But mm. anyway, <laughs> let's show it to uh, that one. That one. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey, again, ask. How's the writing going? All right, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad. I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. Ah, wouldn't count on that. You never know. Want to share what you wrote today? Sure. Here you go. Itchy. I gave my poem to Monica. Alright. Great job, Usk. I was going ooh in my head while reading it. It's really metaphorical. Not sure why, but I didn't expect you to go for something so deep. I guess I underestimated you. It's easiest for me to keep everyone's expectations low. That way it always <laughs> it always counts when I put in some effort. Excuse me. <laughs> That's not very fair. Well, I guess it worked anyway. You know that your likes is kinda running, right? See? She's the one to be like, oh, you're ready for that girl, you go and do that shit. Uh, yeah, I guess that's right. <laughs> Writing that's full of imagery and symbolism? Unlike Sayori who likes using simple and direct words to describe happiness and sadness, Yuri likes it when the readers have left it derived. Derived? Their own meaning out of it. It's very challenging to write, write like that effectively, both allowing people to get something out of it just by feel, or letting them deeply analyze all of the nuances. It can take many years of practice. It can take years of practice, which I'm assuming Yuri has at this point. I never really asked, though. I'm sure I'm nowhere near her level yet. Don't worry so much about that. You do your own thing. Just keep exploring and learn by new, trying new things. <laughs> yeah, we saw it at the start screen that it was like, Whoa, if you're not into horror, don't play it. But anyway, you want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. Alright, let's take a look. Save me. The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors. Flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, blue. And endless... Cacophony. <gasps> Kakudemon. An endless Kakudemon. Meaningless noise. <laughs> the noise, it won't stop. Violent, grating waveforms, squeaking, screeching, piercing, sine, cosine, co cosine, cosine, <laughs> tangent, like playing a chalkboard on the turntable, like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust, an endless poem, meaningless, load me. Yeah, I agree. Mm. 
Should have been more abstract than your last one, huh? Ha. <laughs> I guess it's just the way I write. Sorry if you don't like it. No, I n never said that. It's just kind of thing I've never really seen before. Hey, yes. I kind of like playing with my space on the paper. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of a poem. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote the lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what it's about, though. Eh. Sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem can be as abstract as, as a physical expression of a feeling. Or a conversation with a reader. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Ew. Triple meat, double the- you know you can't have triple... Double? Wait. Are you having three different kinds of meats? On a double sandwich? You damn American. <laughs> I don't mean that. I'm sorry if I offended you Americans and, and wizard. Chill. <laughs> Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game! Whoa! She just... Did she just break the fourth wall here? She just told me to save my game. Dude. <laughs> you never know, you might change your mind. Or when something unexpected may happen. Wait, is this tip even about writing? What am I even talking about? <laughs> oh, okay, I, I get it, I get it. <laughs> Thanks for listening. She did? She broke the fourth wall? It's one of those games now. Who's gonna turn into Cthulhu? One else. It has some nice feelings in it. Ah, I'm glad. Still, though, your tone makes it sound like you like yesterday's poem better. <laughs> eh, I guess you caught me. Sometimes you know me a little too well for my own good. Well, don't just try to be nice about it. If I'm doing a bad job, then I'd rather just hear it. No, no! I, I still like this one, I promise. No, I wouldn't lie to you, Usk. Never, ever! Yeah, I guess so. What made yesterday's poem so great compared to this one, then? Um... Well, I'm not very good at figuring out if poems are good or bad. But that's why I just go by my heart. If it makes me feel things, then it must be a good poem. I'm sure that's exactly how it works. Then again, I guess conveying feelings is a pretty important part of this whole thing. Yeah, maybe. Honestly, I don't even know what kind of writing to like in the first place. Yeah. Me neither. Ugh. Why don't you at least try and give it some thought? Aw, you want, you want to write something for me? So sweet. Yeah, right. But you're always thinking about other people. You need to think about yourself once in a while. Oh, crack my elbow. If you don't, you might have been getting hurt at some point. Hmm? Well, I don't really know what you mean, but I'll try to keep in mind. Well, whatever. Anyway, let's see. Hmm, I guess I like... Happy poems. Wait, sometimes I like sad poems too. Sometimes a little bit of both. This 
a word for that, right? It's the word I'm looking for. Bittersweet. Yeah. I like the things that are happy and things that are sad. Happy and sad? I can't see you liking something sad, Sayori. Well, I like happy the most. But sometimes when you have a little rain cloud in your head, sad poet can help to get the rain cloud a little hug. Make a nice happy rainbow. Sayori, that's unexpectedly poetic. Hmm? It is? Maybe I'm getting better at expressing my feelings after all. Thanks, Ellis. I should go write that down then. You can read my poem now, okay? I'm oh, sorry, I took a piece of licorice and. Now it's difficult to read with it, <laughs> with it in my mouth. I'm just gonna... Crunch, crunch, it's gone. Bottles. I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie yard. Secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine all rubbing together in a like a bundle of kittens. You know, it's the the one from from the 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 thingy this 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 thingy the ones that look like lucky song but it burnt. Inside with my thumb. What? We have someone log in on Skype. <laughs> uh, where were I? Who was it? I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly. There's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe. And I put a bottle on a shelf with other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts in bottles, all in a row. <laughs> My collection makes me lots of friends. Each bottle is starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friends feel a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper my fingers go. Like explore a dark cave, discovering the secrets hiding within the nooks and crannies. Digging and digging, scraping and scraping. Ooh. Scraping is a word that I don't like. It's like, ugh. I blow dust, dust off my bottle caps. Feels like time. Doesn't feel like time is. Ah. Doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally, all done, I open up, and in come my friends. In they come, in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them from the shelf, one after another, holding them out to each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends. My friends weren't smiling. They are all shouting, pleading, something, but all I hear is echo, 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 inside my head. Aww. It's so sad. Holy crap, Sayori did really write this? Of course I did. Didn't I tell you I yesterday I was gonna write the best poem ever? Yeah, but, I mean... I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot. I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see it, Dad. Something's kinda creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm used to you being so cheerful. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. Point is, it came out good, so you should be proud of it. Aw, thanks. I feel like... I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. 
writing is like magic. <laughs> You've gotten pretty passionate about this. Huh. I hope you keep it up. Yeah, writing is the best. <laughs> I'm gonna keep writing until I die. Which might be soon, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> don't get ahead of yourself. Sayori has always had, a, always had a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it no more than a week later. I wonder if this one, this is one of those times. But seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. Hmm. Well, it's not really any worse than your last one. But I can't really say it's any better either. Phew. Hmm? Phew what? Eh, uh, well. Anything that isn't a train wake, I'll take as a win. And I get the feeling you're probably the most critical. Hey, hey, what makes you... Hey, if that was a compliment. Uh, I'm glad to see someone recognize my, my, recognizes my experience. Well then, keep practicing and maybe you'll be as good as me someday. That's... Uh, something tells me Natsuki completely missed the point. Come to think of it, this kind of reminds me of Sayori's poem from yesterday. Hmm? You think so? Yeah, well, I guess if you've been friends with her for so long, you might be on the same wavelength. But you never really struck me as her type. Sayori has a type all of a sudden? Well, I don't know, but honestly, how can someone so... Uh, fluffy spend so much time with someone like you? It's like she's dragging around a dead weight. Uh, that was a little unnecessary. Kind of think of it. If it weren't for me, she would probably just fly away, like letting go of the balloon. I could say that we take care of each other in our own way. Whatever it is, I don't get it. Oh yeah, I'm supposed to show you my poem. Here. Oh my god, so much reading. I've gotten myself into. What is this shit? I should pick the dating sim with. Voice acting. <sighs> Amy likes spiders. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wriggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. She likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. She likes spiders. Her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends start to like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if she doesn't. It doesn't matter if it doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world is better off without spider lovers. And I'm gonna tell everyone. Hmm. That was... <laughs> Not bad, right? It's quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Yesterday's was way too short. I was just warming up. I hope you didn't think that was the best I could do. No, of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. I doubt I have to explain it. Sometimes you can explain complicated, complicated issues with much simpler analogies. <laughs> I guess someone really confident says that about their own writing. Like this girl. And it helps people realize how stupid they're being. Like, anyone would agree that the subject of this poem is an ignorant jerk. I get a feeling she's um, ready.
writing about theory. Except she called her Amy instead. Do you know people like that? Of course, it's about it's about her everyone thinks my it doesn't matter. It can be about anything. I wrote it to be easy to relate to. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or guilty pleasure. Something that you're afraid of if people find out and make fun of you or think less of you. That just make people stupid. Who cares what someone likes as long as they're not hurting anyone and it makes them happy. I think people really need to learn to respect others for liking weird things. Huh. That's funny. Yuri wrote about something similar today. Hmm? Did you say Yuri? Yeah. She said her poem wasn't about an unusual hobby of hers. I didn't really get it, but she said something similar to you. The people shouldn't make each other feel insecure about those things. Really? Well... I mean, Yuri's pretty weird. So I wouldn't doubt that she has some weird hobbies. I think there's anything wrong with that. Uh, it's not like I would judge her or anything. That's okay, has trouble finding words. I g guess I should try not to be so mean to her. She feels insecure about her weird behaviors and stuff. I mean, I always hate people who make me feel insecure. And you made me feel insecure yesterday. But the way you put it, does sound like she's learned her lesson. Well, I would say so. Even if her writing style is really different, I'm sure she'll appreciate the message in your poem. It's what I do best, after all. I don't like writing unless there's a good message to take away from it. Like, conveying emotions is important. But I want to make people think, not just feel. Remember that. I'm gonna write a good one for tomorrow. Too, so look forward to it. Okay, everyone. We're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned for today, so if everyone could come and sit at the front of the room. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Ugh. Do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put it together anything good in just a few days. We'll end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're gonna keep it simple, okay? We won't need much more than a few decorations. So you already have been working on posters and I have to sign some pamphlets we can give out during the event. Okay, that's great and all. But that doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for the event. Ah, sorry, I thought you heard about it already. We're going to be performing! Performing? Um, Monica? Yeah! We're going to have. We're going to be having a poetry performance. Performance. Each of us are going to choose a poem to recite during the event. But the cool part is. We're also going to let anyone else come up and recite poems too. So you're just putting it all on the posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. Hee <laughs> hee. So Yuri, who's been ho who's been coloring the posters, a poster, holds it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't. You didn't already start putting those posters up, did you? Uh, well, I did. I really think it's that bad of an idea. Well, no. It's not a bad idea. But I didn't sign up for this, you know. There's no way I'm going to perform in front of a group of people like that. I, I agree with Natsuki. I could never, in my life, do something like that. Imagine it. Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys! Sayori, I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Natsuki and Yuri have never shared their poems with anyone until just a couple of days ago. It's a lot for a lot to ask them for. It's a lot for. It's a lot to 
have asked for them to recite their poems out loud for a whole room full of people. I guess I kind of overlooked that. So I'm sorry. But... I still think we should give it our best. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. If we start the event and each put on a good performance, then it was to inspire others to do the same. And the more people are performing, the better we'll be able to show everyone that literature is what it's all about. Yeah, it's about expressing your feelings, being intimate with yourself. <laughs> Finding new horizons and having fun. It's right. And it's those reasons we're all in this club today. Don't you want to share that with others? To inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you in here in the first place? I know you do. I know we all do. And if it all takes standing in front of the room with two men and reciting a poem, then I know you can do it. That's okay, and you already remain silent. So Yuri looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Sayori and Monica have been trying really hard to get new members. The least we can do is help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but... Looks like Natsuki doesn't have any arguments left. Uh, okay, fine. I guess I'll just have to get it over with. Alright! Phew! Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? Yuri dejectedly glances around at everyone's, everyone else's expectant faces. Hmm. I, I guess I don't really have a choice. Ha! Ah, that's everyone! You're the best, Yuri. This club is seriously, seriously going to be the death of me. Oh gosh. You'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway... Actually, wait, they, they should be able to... recite... any poem. It shouldn't just be their own, right? They could be like, Oh, I like this poem by this author. Let me... Let me recite it. That much of a problem, right? I don't know. Seems like this is more of a writing club than, than a literature club. I don't know. Whatever. Whatever. Let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice reciting them in front of each other. N no way! Monica! This is too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to do it in front of strangers? Oh no. Don't worry. I'll start off to help I feel a little help. I'll start off to help everyone feel a little more comfortable. Can I go next? <laughs> of course. Now let's see. Monica flips through her notebook the specific poem she had in mind for herself. Then she stands behind the podium. The title of this poem is The Way They Fly. <clears throat> wow, I guess. <coughs> really? Ahem. Monica begins reciting her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her infliction is pristine. Unlike mine. She knows exactly how to apply him. Apply emotion behind each line she recites, bringing the words to life. Is this something she's done before, or is she simply a natural? I glance, glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Sayori looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finishes the recitation. The four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath and smiles. That was so good, Monica! <laughs> Thank you very much. I was just hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Sayori? Uh, I'll go next. Ooh, ah, Yuri's fired up all of a sudden. Yuri clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and stand up. stands up. K 
Keeping her head down, she walks quietly over to the podium. This poem is called... Yuri anxiously glances at each of us. You can do it, Yuri! It, it's called... After image of a crim crimson eye. Yuri's voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets absorbed into her books. Her quivering words transform into sharp syllables of a fierce, confident woman. The poem is full of twists and turns in the structure that she is it's perfect timing. This must be a rare glimpse in the whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed inside her head. Suddenly, she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back into reality and glances around her, as if she's bewildered even by herself. Hey! It's up to me to save the situation. I'm the first to start plotting. Everyone joins me afterward and we give Yuri the recognition she deserves. It's not what we didn't want to applaud of her, but we're so caught off guard that we must have forgotten. As we applaud, Yuri holds the poem to her chest and rushes back to her seat. Yuri, that was really good! Thank you for sharing! Looks like Yuri is down for the count. Okay! Yes, I'm next then! Sayori hops out of her chair and cheerfully walks to the podium. This one is called... My Meadow! Ah! <laughs> Sorry, I giggled. <laughs> Sayori! It's a lot harder than I thought. How did you guys do it so easily? Ah! Try not to think of it like you're reciting to other people. Imagine... Imagining you're... Imagine you're reciting it to yourself. Like in front of a mirror. Or in your own head. It's your poem, so it come out the best way. I see, I see. Okay then. Sayori begins her poem. Somehow it feels like her soft voice was made as a perfect match. The poem isn't aimlessly cheery like Sayori is. It's serene and bittersweet. If I were to read this on paper, I probably wouldn't think much of it. But hearing it come from Sayori's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Sayori meant she would when she said she liked my poems. It's like I get to reach more deeply into someone I thought I knew through and through. Sayori finishes, and we applaud. I did it! Good job, Sayori. It even us likes it. I guess that's a good sign. What does that even mean? It came out nicely, Sayori. The atmosphere of the poem fits you really nicely. But it might be that other poems wouldn't work quite as well with. But it might be that other poems wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. Hmm? I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poems of yours where that sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work out as well. It might have need a little more force behind them, depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean. <laughs> That's... well, I've been practicing this kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do it in front of everyone. <laughs> then next time, I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges you a little more. I don't have much time before the festival, you know. Okay! Now, who's next? That's okay. Hmm. <laughs> don't make me go before us. It's not like I can compare to you guys anyway. Might as well let us lower everyone's standard a little before I have to do it. <laughs> what a bitch! <laughs> Night, Tsuki. It's fine, it's fine. Might as well get in with it. But it's not like I have much of a selection of what to read. I'll just have to go with what I wrote for today. I, step, I, st I stand up and step in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me on me, making me feel terribly awkward. I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyway. Sorry, I'm not really as good as everyone else. Don't worry about it so much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. It's something that'll improve over time, though. 
Yeah, maybe. Alright then, it just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah, I'm going. Natsuki begrudgingly sets, gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. The podium is called... It's called... Oh, why are you all looking at me? Because you're presenting. Hmm. Anyway, the poem is called Jump. Natsuki takes a breath. When she starts reciting the poem, her sour attitude appears and disappears a little. While she's still a little un unenthused, her poem has a rhythm and rhyme to it. It's Natsuki's trademark style and works surprisingly well when spoken out loud. The words feel like they bounce up and down as if given life to the poem. Natsuki finishes and everyone applauds. She hops back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. <laughs> Better not make me do that again. Oh, uh, well. You at least feel prepared enough to recite a poem in front of other people. I mean, doing it in front of other people will be way easier. I can put down whatever face I want for other people. But when it's just my friends, it's just embarrassing. That's a surprise, Natsuki. I think it would be the other way around for me. Well, that's just how it is, so... Well, I guess in that case... I won't have so much to worry about at the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming through. It might be hard, but I hope all of you have an idea of what's it, what it's like now. Make sure you pick a poem and get enough practice before the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets. Let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting. Jeez. I should probably find some other poem to recite instead. That's fine too. It doesn't have to be your own. See? <laughs> I said so. You should just take another author's poem and recite it and be like, This is awesome. I like it. Here you go. It's not a writing club. Just... Nyeh. I'm already pleasantly surprised that you're putting in all this effort for the club. It makes me really happy. Ah, uh, yeah, no problem. Okay, everyone. I think that's about it for today. I know the festival is coming up, but let's try to write poems for tomorrow, too. It's been working out really nicely so far, so I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, we'll finish planning tomorrow, and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday's the big day! I can't wait! I can do this, I can do this! Alright. I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same, find the same enthusiasm as Sayori and Monica, but I'll do my best to get through it. If it's for the sake of the club, and impressing Monica, I'll have to do my best. Let it go, Sayori. Yup. Look at you two, always going home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? Heh <laughs> Jeez, you guys. Don't make such a big deal out of it. it must be a little nice, though. Well, uh... How am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay, I was cute enough to say it. <laughs> Whatever, let's go already. I walk home with Sayori once more. Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. Excuse me? But today, Sayori's being a little quieter than usual on the way home. Hey, Sayori. Sorry, I was just spacing out. Ah, no wonder. Um, I was thinking about something from earlier. Like how we get to... I mean... Sayori fumbles with her words. So... Let's just say that one day Yuri asked to walk home with you. Hmm? What would you do? What kind of question is that? You're kind of putting me on the spot here. <sighs> well. Is this why Monica to told us to save? Also, we didn't know where Yuri lives. If she lives on the other side of town, hell no, I wouldn't walk home with her unless, like, we're gonna do... 
homework or something. <laughs> But, I mean, yeah, these games award you for going with just one person, so... Walking home with Yuri, huh? Why does the thought of that make my heart pound? <laughs> I mean... Given how hard it is for her to socialize, it would feel awful turning her down, so... Isn't she so beautiful and smart? That has nothing to do with what I just said. <laughs> you admitted it! Jeez. There's not even any point in speculating something that's never gonna happen. Well, maybe. I didn't just like to think about it. Not long before you won't need me anymore, you know. Need you? Sayori, I can't figure out how you're seeing things in your head right now. Sorry. Everyone is different. Nobody in the club is a replacement for you. Mm, if you say so. Conversation trails off and I'm left feeling awkward. But it was kind of her fault for trapping me with such a weird question. I can't just lie to her. But if there's something that makes her happy, I would hate to take that away from her. That's why I said there's no point in speculating. Then again festival is only a few days away. Who knows what will happen in that time. <sighs> okay. We've been, I've been 